How's it going guys? Adam here from A to Z Body Fitness and today I'm just going to go over a few tips for beginners that are just starting to get out into weightlifting and starting to go to the gym. So I figured I just wanted to make a video that'll just uh, speak to essentially anybody of any age or you know any culture or wherever you're from if you're whether you're like 18 or whether you're 40 or whether you're 50 if you're just starting to get into the gym and you're just starting to lift weights these tips are going to be for you because i know when i was uh, just starting to work out roughly around 14 years ago or so um, i kind of just went in there started lifting weights you know listened to some people that i trusted and essentially just you know get gathered information of what i could on what i thought was best but if there were some tips put aside that could have guided me a little better which is some of the ones that i'm going to give you it would have directed me in a better direction and i think i probably would have got a little bit more results in the beginning than what i had had so i just figured again i just make these tips so that you can take them yourself and when you go to the gym you can start applying them to really help you uh, get started in that right direction and give you better results in a bit of a quicker pace. Now just keep in mind, even with these tips and even with doing these, it's not going to allow you to put on muscle, it's not going to allow you to get results like ultimately fast. Everything still takes time, right? It's just going to put you in the right direction, it's going to put you in a more concrete direction versus just trying out different things, which you still should do because you should always be curious and try different things out. But again, I just want to make it clear that at the end of the day, these are not going to be some like five step ultimate rule or seven step quick easy guide to get crazy gains on all that stuff it doesn't work that doesn't exist you have to put in the time you have to put in the work and these are just going to help you get there at a little bit of an easier state so the first one i would suggest to do a full body workout for the first two to three months reason why is because when you're first getting into the gym you're just starting weights you know your ligaments and your joints and your muscles are not used to the weight they're not used to the amount of pressure that you're going to put on it and just the the different motions and the different exercises that you're going to do so i would do a full body exercise get your muscles and get your joints used to the weight and used to the motion of you doing these exercises one easy way that you can do this is do um, three full body days a week and then just take a break every other day and do that again for the first one to two months pick an exercise one to two exercises for each body part do two sets and then just go for about anywhere between 10 to 12 reps just to get your body, like I said, used to the actual movement of the, of the exercise, get your joints and your ligaments and your muscles used to the motion of the exercises that you're doing. Another thing to understand with this as well, that everybody's different. Some people are gonna be genetically stronger, their muscles are gonna be already predispositioned. Other people are gonna have less muscle on them. Some people are, are gonna have more fat on them just because, again, of their genetics and how their genetics play a role in their life. Um, if some people are stronger and they feel like they can go four days a week instead of three days, that's fine too. You can work to whatever you're able to do and whatever you feel is comfortable. I would still suggest to do three days though, not push it, just ease yourself into it. And then after that, after you've done three days and you start getting used to it, then you can start adding in more days. You can start adding in more sets, different exercises, pushing your limits a little bit more. But again, just as a standard and as a precaution, just to do three days in the beginning, do a full body, get your body used to the actual weight that you're using and to the movements and the mobility that you're gonna be putting your body through. And then from there, you can increase. The other thing is pick a weight that works, right? There's been too many times where I've seen um, a lot of, and th this goes for any range. It could be for people who've been working out for a long time, but especially for people who are just working out, they think they have to lift, lift heavy because if they lift heavy, they're actually gonna put on more muscle that way. And that's actually not the case. You need to pick a weight that's roughly 50 to 60% of what you're able to lift, right? So all that means basically is get a weight that you're able to do a good solid 10 to 12 reps with and make sure you control the motion. So if I'm doing a bicep curl, okay, you're gonna get a weight that you can lift all the way up all the way down that you can fully extend with and that you can control. You don't wanna be using your other muscles to help that muscle out because then you're taking away from your actual bicep that's trying to engage and that's trying to work. The way that your muscles actually grow is through the actual contraction of the movement, right? So that's why it's important to get a weight that you're able to do, not something too heavy, because if you get something too heavy, you're not gonna be able to contract that, that muscle as much as you can, therefore you're not gonna be able to tear the fibers as much, right? So it's just imperative that you always pick a proper weight that you're able to handle and that you can do 10 to 12 reps with for two sets and continue to use that weight until you actually build enough strength and enough muscle a few months 
two, three, four months, depending on the person down the road. And then you can increase it by five, 10 pounds max. And then you keep going from there. And that's actually how you build strength over time, right? You can also build your strength doing uh, like your one rep max or doing two or three repetitions of a heavy weight. And that's fine too. You can do that as well. But generally, again, a lot of people in the beginning, they do this in, uh, in a bad way because their technique and their form just isn't there yet to support the weight that they're trying to press, right? Or that they're trying to pull or trying to lift, whatever the case may be. So they end up getting injured or they end up continuing to do this and they think they're actually making, um, making progress and they will be making a little bit of progress because nonetheless, you're still pressing something that's heavy, but you're going to be setting yourself up for a probable injury down the road and you're not getting the results you could have gotten had you done things the right way. So pick the right weight, make sure you are using a weight that you're able to handle and then slowly increasing it stronger over time. And when you do, then you increase the weight. So the next rule, it kind of ties into what I was just saying, but it's control the movement. You want to make sure that you're doing the exercise properly, right? You want to make sure that your form is always as concrete and as stable as possible because that's going to allow you to work the muscle that you're trying to work, right? If you're all, unless you're doing a specific exercise or certain, a certain circuit training where you're using multiple muscles at the same time, or you're doing something uh, like a compound exercise, like a deadlift, where you're using multiple muscles to perform the exercise, that's fine. But even still, when you're doing those, you want to make sure that your form and that your technique is 100% correct. Because again, if it's not, you're not gonna get the results that you could have gotten had you done it 100% correct, right? And then again, the other thing is, you're always gonna set up yourself for a probable injury down the road, which is what you wanna try and avoid. So make sure again, you control your movement as much as possible. It's very imperative to how you're gonna perform the exercise and the compounding results you're gonna get down the road when it comes to months and years. All right, and then the last tip that I have is something that I, most people don't even do, which they should be doing, and that's stretching and foam rolling, okay? Stretching and foam rolling, especially stretching, is very important. When you're younger, again, this comes down to your genetics, you know, how you've been brought up, your injury-related problems, uh, what you eat, there's a lot of different factors, but generally speaking, when you're younger, because you're, you know, you're youthful, you're, you're just starting to, your muscles are just starting to grow, your ligaments are, are at their, their strongest point, you have more flexibility and mobility, right? But as you get older, okay, you, that starts to decline. So if you don't start stretching and you don't start foam rolling, you will start to increase the chances of you getting injured. So when you work out, you actually can cause more of a problem for your muscles getting injured through pulling them when you exercise, right? Because you're putting a lot of, um, a lot of load and you're putting a lot of intensity on the muscle when you work out, depending what your regimen is, how if you're doing like strongman lifts, Olympic lifting, you're just doing straight repetitions, whatever the case may be, you're putting them under stress, right? And the one way that you need to de-stress those muscles is through foam rolling and through stretching, right? And as I was saying, as you're younger, it's you're gonna be able to handle this a lot more, but once you start to get in your late 20s, early 30s and up, it gets harder for your body to recover. So it's very important that you start younger, maintain a, a regimen that's catered to uh, doing your exercises and also for your stretches and your foam rolling, and you will thank yourself later on in life, right? It's very easy to discard it and not do that, but you're gonna pay the consequences if you don't continue to stretch and foam roll when you're younger into your later years, because you're gonna start breaking down, you're not gonna be able to extend your body as much, it's gonna stop you from being able to actually perform exercises properly, because you won't have the mobility and you won't have the flexibility, it's gonna allow for smaller injuries to creep up and if you don't handle those injuries with physio and doing stretching again, it's gonna turn into bigger injuries as well and it's just uh, a complete landslide from there. So one of the biggest things I always tell people when they're just starting to get into the gym and they're just starting to work out, make sure you add stretching to your routines. All you have to do is add five minutes before your workout with dynamic stretching, five minutes after with static, and you should also be giving roughly 10 minutes or so every day to second day to a full body routine. And then that will increase over time as well because you will start to get more limber. Your muscles will start to get stronger. They will be able to stretch them more. Your, your flexibility will get better and your mobility will get better. So just as if you were increasing the weight or adding more repetitions because you're getting stronger, the same thing needs to be done with stretching as you should increase the time frame that you have with stretching. So instead of only doing 30 seconds, you add it to 40 and then to 50 and so on and so forth with every muscle that you're doing. All right, guys, if you like what you watch, you know what to do. Click, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you thought. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.